Spoon of consciousness. Let's raise our frequency. Welcome to the Spoon of Consciousness podcast. My guest today is Tommy and I'll let him introduce himself for you. Hi folks, my name is obviously Tommy Kelly. I've got a YouTube channel, Tofu Tommy. All right, so uh, first of all, where did you get the name Tofu Tommy? Obviously because I'm, I'm vegan, obviously, so that's, that was a big part of it. Obviously, I, I used to have a YouTube channel called Tommy's Recovery Journal talking about obviously my eating disorder and things like that. But I went vegan in January 2016 and that basically brought me on to changing my name to Tofu Tommy because I do a lot of vegan activism and things like that. Mm, so what sparked the change? What made you want to go vegan? Well, I had been, I've obviously had an eating disorder for like 20 years now, which obviously started with the loss of my mum in 1997. I was actually a semi-professional footballer at the time and I went away to Australia. I'd been down to roughly five stone in the year 2000. I went away to Australia and arriving back off the plane, arriving at Glasgow after a six month uh, holiday in Australia, I actually took a massive heart attack and I was dead for nine minutes at that point. And they, they only got my heart started being certain adrenaline into my lung to get my, my heart restarted. And I was in a potassium coma for three months at that point. And I'd always wanted to be vegan because I actually worked in a slaughterhouse in uh, 1997, round about the time that my mum actually passed away when I was a semi-professional footballer at the same time. And I'd seen all the cruelty that had went on. And over the years, I always wanted to be vegan, but I get prevented by my recovery team because a lot of people do use it as a mask for their eating disorder to restrict food. But after relapses, we obviously my wife's ovarian cancer in the year 2005 and our miscarriages and then the loss of my dad in the year 2014, I said to my eating disorder recovery team that I wanted to go vegan for obviously the animals and the ethical reasons and basically make sure that I wasn't avoiding any food groups and basically having everything I had before in a US standard diet now veganised and they let me go vegan because I wanted to, when I seen the suffering of the animals and the cruelty that goes on, I didn't want to be a part of that because I always liked the, the saying that Joey Cabstrong says that when you eat suffering, you become suffering because when the animals die, they release things like adrenaline and cortisol and when we eat that, we're consuming all that. And it's great to see the kind of shift and change in veganism because there's now like half a million people in the vegan in the UK at the moment. And like I say, we're growing enough food to obviously feed around about 10 billion people and there's only 7.5 billion on the actual planet. So we, we feed all that to obviously get animals to get their meat and such likes as well. But we obviously get less pound for pound, like because there's ninety one percent of the rainforest destroyed for animal agriculture, which is basically a football pitch every minute. That's that's insane. When I when when I think about the way that we produce meat in the world, it's pretty messed up because we're feeding them so that they can feed us. Like it, it, we we can just cut out the middleman and feed ourselves directly, that's which. It. Which does make sense. However, like it's worth mentioning, I'm not vegan myself, but I definitely recognize the benefits of the plant-based diet. Um, I think most of us know who Infinite Waters' Ralph Smart is. Um, I, I did the seven-day vegan challenge. And in that week, like I can't really explain it in any other way than saying I felt lighter, like my body and my mind. Like I felt really light and I was, uh, I had a lot of energy and I wasn't like, spending ages on the toilet. Exactly. Um, you think of the annual deaths in the UK, I've got them right down here, it says 138,745 die with cancer, 78,066 with heart disease, and most of the vegan diet can actually help redu reduce and prevent things like obviously diabetes, type 2 diabetes and such likes as well, so it's, it's got a great healing for obviously us as well as doing it for the right reasons which is the animals obviously. Hmm. But this is the this is the problem I have with um, the meat industry in particular is that um, maybe like what fifty years ago when my grandparents would get meat, it would be at um, you know once a week maybe maybe like one a couple of times a week max. Uh, even when my parents were um, young, they would have KFC once maybe twice a month, and and that was like a big treat. But now that we have to mass produce the meat. 
it's got so many like toxins the gro- the conditions for the animals are really bad which is why like when i eat meat now i try and go to the farm and stuff like that but even that i've seen like speaking with more people who are vegan and who are like doing the activism there's a lot of merit to the whole idea that we don't really need to eat the animals so what what like how can how could how would you suggest to other people to start transitioning from the way they're eating now to to a more healthy lifestyle well i know a lot of people obviously push this kind of real unrealistic vegan lifestyle onto people saying that you should just go vegan overnight and for some people that is possible i did that for myself but for the most majority of people i would say a slow transition is probably better swapping out things like obviously your milks for your plants-based milks like oat milk rice milk almond milk you've got coconut milk you've got hemp milk doing things small changes obviously getting plant-based cheeses and such likes and then Try to obviously limit your, your meat consumption, whether you do that like a meatless Monday, you do a few meals a week where you're actually starting to go vegan that way. I would do it gradually so it's more sustainable because I think it, for a lot of people, if they start to cut things out and just go vegan straight away, it's probably not going to be sustainable for them. Mm, that's Yeah, I, I would agree. I think the main thing that has helped me with uh, when I started finding out about veganism is the milk. Oh, man. The, the amount of disgusting stuff that's in cow milk because of it has to be so mass produced. It's like um, I was watching this video where they pressed on the side of the cow and this pus just started coming out. And it was so disgusting. Like maybe that was a one off, but um, I don't really know too much about that stuff. But every time I had dairy or like cheese or milk or some kind of dairy product, I would get some kind of digestional discomfort like it wasn't it just didn't feel right and then I saw this meme that said you don't need milk because you're not a baby cow yeah that, well that's what a lot of people actually struggle with they struggle with uh, giving up milk and cheese because there's a good reason for that actually there's actually a thing in milk and cheese called casomorphines which is actually in the strongest opiate drugs and things like that. So that that basically is an addiction, and that's why a lot of people actually struggle to give it up. Whoa, that's insane. I had no idea that that was in there. So what, is, it, what does that do? It's, it's basically the same effect that you would get off of things like, like, like the strongest drugs, like heroin and things like that. It basically gives you these type of highs. And a lot of people don't understand that. It's, that's why it's so hard to give up. But that, that, uh, that's interesting because I've never felt that mad high when I've, drink, when I've drank milk in the past. No, that, I haven't actually myself. That, that's the strange thing, but there's actually proof that that's actually what's in cheese and d- dairy, things like that, like especially cheese is a case of morphines and things. So could they be adding that in there and like small doses to build up the addiction? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, obviously, because they start doing things like adding in antibiotics and things like that into, obviously, the milk and dairy. Man, that, that, that is one thing I don't agree with. I personally, I don't take any pharmaceutical drugs, even if I'm ill, quote unquote. But um, they're feeding chickens and cows and pigs antibiotics because the environments they're being raised in is so fucked up. So, like, when, when they eat that, we're eating them and we're having that and, and that. Like, that was one big thing that I was like, no way, I don't want to have anything to do with the pharmaceutical industry at all. Well, that's what I say, is milk's basically just hormones and antibiotics, and there's, but actually when the cows are actually strapped to these machines, which is up to six months at a time, they're actually, they leak in things like blood into the, the system in the milk, which is basically called mastitis, and it leaches pus into the milk, and in the UK, I've actually got it written down here, it says, in the UK, the limit for pus in milk is 400 million pus cells per litre. But that's the same for pasteurising as well. Pasteurising doesn't remove it, it just sanitises it. And you can get all your calcium and things like green vegetables and plant-based milks and things like that as well. So there's, there's really, really no need for it, really. I, you know what? That is one thing that I do always, I try and tell people, we don't need to drink milk. 
It's it's like one of the worst lies that's ever been told. And for what? So you can make money off the exploitation of this animal. Which look, I'm not a vegan activist by any means necessary. Like I'm not by any stretch of the imagination any type of vegan activist. But I definitely agree. There's no need to eat milk, drink milk, or eat like the cheese that we get from milk is gonna have that bad stuff in it. And like, yeah, I I think since I stopped drinking milk, I, my stomach's been a lot happier. <laughs> yeah, that that's it's very true that a lot of the, the people are actually lactose intolerant and such likes as well. So, actually, milk they actually see is actually designed to make a cow go for a ninety pound calf to a five hundred pound cow in actually a year. That's actually what it's that's what they say. And it's got things like growth hormones. It's actually tumors and weight gain. It's all, all known for that as well. That is insane. And and one thing that I think is really worth mentioning here is the fact that we are encouraged to, to drink this product. It look, w- Without getting too far into conspiracy theories and tinfoil hats and whatnot, I think it's part of that agenda of, of dumbing, well, either dumbing the population down or keeping us under some sort of control. Because when you have like something like milk in your system every day, be, given that it's hard to digest and that you know it's something that's designed to bulk you up it's keeping you at a, a dent like very dense in the body like it's the digestive system is always using energy to break that down so if you're preoccupied with that throughout the day or every single day you're introducing that to your system you haven't really got time to like your, your body doesn't have energy to do other things and I think that is one of the instruments of control that's at play here. It's true, and you think it, there's actually like 100 million starving people around the world and we actually use 45% of the world's land just for farm animals and a third of that's water. And they actually say like a, a quarter pounder burger takes up to 660 gallons of water, which equals basically not showering for two months. <laughs> Man, that... So, okay, like, we with with all of this agenda that's going on with the meat industry um keeping foods that are like bad for us such as mcdonald's and things like that keeping them at the forefront of advertising what do you think the agenda is behind all of that well i would uh, i I might be just being an advocate here but i think basically it's because it's bringing in a lot of money to the economy and I think that's why because it, uh, the government does fund a lot of these studies for these type of things and sadly that, that, that's what's happening. Like I say, they, they see it as a commodity and I don't think it'll, it'll ever change. I mean, there's only like 2 to 7% of the population that's in the world that's actually vegan at the moment but hopefully that's growing all the time. So with, with regards to the, the economy profiting off this exploitation of animals, like it's kind of like slavery, right? You, you capture the, the, the people, in this case the animals, you put them to work and then they die. And you don't pay them, you just profit from their labour or their meat or whatever it is. So, you know, what could we... Uh, obviously there's vegan movements uh, in a lot of places and that's really cool, but what else do you think we can do to change that system i think the only way to change the system is basically standing up with with, with one money basically and because it's a supply and demand is if we keep demanding it they're going to keep supplying it the only thing that we can do is stand up and basically say that we're we're not wanting our products anymore that we're wanting that we know basically what's on the shelf because they basically try to hide what the product is in the shelf they call it things like chicken nuggets, chicken burgers, rather than it actually being a chicken or a cow and such like. It's basically to disguise it from what it is, they coat it in breadcrumbs. And that we've just basically got to stand up and just say that we're not just going to have it anymore and that's the only way we can go forward. I like that. I like the way of thinking because um, look, there, I, don't want to, um, I don't want to come off as rude, but I get pissed whenever I go into Tesco. I get really angry because I see stuff that on the box, it will show you a picture of the chicken burgers. And, and then it, on the front, this is where I get annoyed, it says made with 100% chicken breast. Now, first of all, what the fuck do you mean 100% chicken breast? How, what other percent is there? And secondly, what do you mean made with? 
how much of it is that? Then you turn the packet around, it says 42% chicken. That is the shit that gets me so angry. And when I see that, I see people picking it up and feeding it to their children. I see people saying, oh, you're weird because you don't eat the freezer food and stuff like that. What, look, I don't judge anyone for eating it, but I'm just saying those companies are very irresponsible because they're promoting this food to us under false pretenses, saying, oh, this is real food. You know, don't worry about it. It's just, uh, yeah, you can keep it in the freezer for a long time because, uh, yeah, it's the freezer. The freezer's got magical powers. When really, they added like a shitload of chemicals in it and it's, it doesn't even look like the original food anymore. So, like, with that being said, what do you think it's a matter of voting with our wallets, again, to, to get rid of that? Yeah, that's the only way to do it. Let's say there is no other way because it's, it's basically supply and demand. It really, really is. And you, yes. th- you think of the cruelty that goes on to the chickens and such like that. Most of them are suffocated in bags and most of them are ground alive just after they're born. It's terrible. Actually, most hens, as soon as they're born, they have things that obviously their, their beak spun off and their iron to burn off their nose. And the male chicks obviously don't lay eggs. They, don't, they don't basically don't make any money. So they're killed immediately by the suffocation and obviously being ground alive. It's, it's horrible to, to think about the, the cruelty that's going on here. Do you think that um, there's any place for meat production in the world? For example, like my idea of it is, you know, you have farms and if you're willing to raise the animal yourself in your backyard and you want to give it a good life and you can kill it yourself, then you, you should be able to eat it. I'm always conflicted by that because I say to myself, a lot of people say that if an animal says a good life, is it okay to kill it? But if I put myself in my shoes and I'm that animal, would I want to be killed? Is there any way to ethically kill an animal? I, I don't think there really is. <laughs> Anything, like I say, a lot of people say that stunning is ethically, but most of the time stunning do- doesn't actually work and they actually feel obviously getting their throat slit and things like that. And we wouldn't want that done to us, so why would we want that done to an animal? Because you wouldn't want it done to a dog or your cat because you see them as a pet. And that's basically because we get that connection to the animal, whereas things like cows and pigs, we don't see that connection because they're not basically what we think is worth family. Mm, that's a really interesting point you know that the other day my dog hurt his leg and oh man oh my god I, I I don't have kids but oh man that that got me right here and and like my friend was saying isn't it funny how you feel like that with your dog but when you look at a pig you're like oh could go for some bacon right now he goes would you ever look at your dog and think oh I might slice off that ear and cook that in some oil I was like no and he said, it's, it's not your fault that you think like that. It's the society that has told us to believe this is food and this is family. And I think that's such an interesting uh, way to look at it. And definitely like before, when I was in my unconscious journey, I was eating a lot of processed meat, a lot of freezer food, stuff like that. I thought everything was, oh, that, I wonder what that tastes like. But now like really like getting to know an animal like a dog, and to see the personality that cows and pigs and sheep have, it's, it's so weird to think of it as, like, you distinguish the difference between this animal and this animal. Like, they all have personalities. Yeah, exactly. Like I say, they're all sentient beings. They can all think. They can all feel pain. They actually say that most pigs are actually just as intelligent as a dog, as a three-year-old, so... It's a, it's a really weird... Um, place to be in for me personally because I feel like I know that this is wrong to to believe that they are different from each other yet the conditioning has been so strong over many years that we're just in the habit that's why when anyone asks me oh when are you going vegan I say I'm in the process of transitioning which for me it might take 20 years it might it might be over tomorrow I don't know but like that for me has been a really powerful thing. But then I, I, I used to watch a lot of Vegan Gaines's content. Do you know, do you know that guy? So I used to watch a lot of Richard's content. And um, at that time, I felt like I was kind of getting guilt tripped in, into like being part of that lifestyle. And I'm just wondering, like, what's your opinion on people who, who um, have that kind of content? I don't like that type of content because I feel being militant and basically 
guilt tripping people into going vegan is probably the wrong way to do it. I always use the connotation that be the vegan you wish you had met before you became vegan. Because if you're encouraging to people and you're basically talking about the struggles that they're having and the worries that they have about going vegan and try to educate them and help them out rather than guilt tripping them and basically being militant, I think that turns them off more than anything. Yeah, I think... Yo, you know, you know, one thing I think is funny, right? Um, so I was watching one of Richard's video one day and um, someone came up to me and they were like, turn that off right now. I was like, why? And they said, oh, yeah, that guy just lies about stuff to make people want to go vegan and stuff like that. I was like, well, what, what, why is that an issue? And it's a really interesting debate because if we lie about something, for example, a reason to go to war with someone, we're benefiting from that, right? But if we lie about something for a good cause, is it like the, it, the good cause kind of gets muddied up because we lied about it, but to get a good outcome rather than lying about something to get profit for the country? Definitely, yeah, I totally agree with that. It's a really, it's a really weird um, like place to be for people who are on the fence. Like a lot of the conscious community, a lot of spiritual people might, might not be vegan, but they definitely see that there's some fucked up stuff going on with the way that we're producing this product for, for our consumption. And people like Richard, like obviously I, I've got nothing against the guy. I don't think he's a bad person or anything. The work that people like Richard do, the work that activists like yourself do, I think all of it contributes to the higher good. And, you know, the way Richard does it, the way you do it, the way other people do it, it will reach different people. And that overall contributes to the same sort of path. Yeah, I totally agree with that and I, I hear it a lot in my church and things because I'm obviously a Christian and a lot of people say to me but oh, God said in the Bible that we should eat meat but he didn't actually say we'd eat meat because in the book of Daniel and things like that obviously talks about living off plants and seeds of the trees and obviously they didn't actually start to consume meat in the Garden of Eden to, after the sin so that basically tells you everything you need to know about that. That's a very interesting point. Because um, in the Quran uh, and in the Bible, and I believe in the Torah, I can't remember, I haven't read all of the texts th thoroughly, but they say that we should use the animals to serve us, but it never says specifically to eat them. Yeah, definitely, because I've actually got the, 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 the parts here in the, the book of Genesis that actually says, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree which is in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on earth, everything that has a breath of life, I have given every plant for food. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and day, and a morning and a sixth night. Wow. So basically what they're saying is, I gave you the plants that yield the seeds that you need to grow them again. So that's, that's basically renewable food forever. And, and exactly. And even in the book of Daniel, he talks about when he, he went to the kings to, to obviously say that he didn't want to eat their rich food and things like that. And after 10 days, they, they, they feasted on f fruits and vegetables and they actually were more fitter and healthier than the people that had actually been eating fruit, obviously the, the processed meats and things like that. So it's, it's really interesting that we're going here because the, the relationship between... Uh, for lack of a better word, mankind and religion, is it's like it, it's being used to justify things for ages, um, war, stuff like like horrible things. Do you think that religion will be continually used to justify this enslavement of animals? Yeah, I think so. Especially, it's not just the animals. You've got to remember, it's compassion for everyone. It's co not compassion for humans, and I feel. That's a big part of the problem with religion at the moment as well. We, we divide everybody. There's so much hate and wars going on. and what, Everybody's equal. There's nobody better than anybody, whether it's skin colour, anything, your background, anything. We're all God's children, and that's really important to understand that. And I hate seeing what's going on in the world at the moment, and I just feel... In some ways, a lot of people use religion to obviously justify their, their cruel acts, and it's, that's what's happening quite a lot. Mm, yeah, that the whole issue of separation, um, which I believe like the vegan movement is is also trying to stop, is um, that that separation is the illusion, right? Like you know there is no separate skin color or hair, whatever it is. 
um, and when we live through the ego, we try and introduce as much separation as possible to see ourselves as different. Because if we were to see ourselves as the same as the animal or as the person that we're trying to kill, we wouldn't want to do it then. So, like, we have to introduce that separateness to say, oh, you're different from me, you're not part of this body, so I can kill you or I can do whatever to you. And I think, like, it just goes to show how really loving we are as beings like we don't want to see other things suffer generally but that's why we have to create a billion and one excuses to be able to do it exactly and i always say i was talking to somebody in the street the other day and they were actually when i was doing a bit of vegan activism and they were saying but surely the animals don't know that they're going to be killed so that's okay but that's basically moral gender because is that right to kill an animal if they don't know what's going to actually be killed? Maybe they don't know they're going to be killed, but they know that there's something going on and they know that it's, it's basically that, the fear of the unknown. It's basically moral value. Do you value an animal's life? Do you value a, a human's life? Would you want the same done to yourself? And that's that's what it's all about, let's say. Mm, I joined a, um, a, a debate recently online which was talking about experimenting on animals and whether it's uh, morally justified to do so in in specifically with the case of curing diseases like Alzheimer's. So my two cents that I added in was we wouldn't even need to do that if if we just ate the real food that was that was supposed to be eaten. We wouldn't need to waste like billions of dollars on this stuff because we we would be eating healthy food like uh, places like Ethiopia, where um, like humans have originated from, like that part of the world, we haven't. They, there's not any like a lot of documented cases of serious mental illness because the food that they're eating is natural. Whereas here, we're getting the GMO, the processed stuff, all of it, and particularly in our old age, because when those people were young, they were eating canned foods, processed foods all of the things that have all of the chemicals in them. And that is why we, part of the reason why we've got this epidemic on our hands with the mental illness. Um, do, you, do you think that there's any way to basically stop that kind of experimentation on, on animals? That, that, that is a good one. <laughs> I don't know if that will ever stop being honest because they're obviously doing it for everything through cleaning products, everything that we use in our household and it's always going to be the way they even test on dogs especially beagles because they reckon that's the special type that they actually use so the testing dogs so a lot of people don't realize that they're, they're testing in the animals that we think is our pets as well it's, it's absolutely terrible but I, I, a lot of people say to me that you shouldn't be obviously using things like medications if you're vegan and such like and that's a difficult one i don't I feel you can never be 100% vegan because people can't avoid medications, unfortunately. It's really sad that the animals are tested on and it's something I really hate. But at the end of the day, you've got to save your own life before you can save any other animals. And that's a hard one. It's unfortunately, we just don't have the vegan options for medications that actually need to save our lives. Yeah, it's that whole issue of um, put the oxygen mask on yourself before others because what, what good is that if you're dead? Um, exactly. So let it really is because a lot of people say they're one hundred percent vegan, but you can never be one hundred percent vegan because there's animal products in the paint in our walls. There's animal products in our car tires. We, we drive a car. There's animal products in the, the the pavement in our streets and our LCD screens. Even in things like our iPhones and our MacBooks, there's animal products in the screens. So. <laughs> Can you really avoid it? You really can't. You've just got to do as much as you possibly can. The way I see it, you can't really avoid the ills of society, I call it, unless you're like completely off the grid. Because believe it or not, I don't. I can't remember who told me this. Uh, it might. I might have heard it on the Joe Rogan podcast. They were saying it's illegal to grow your own food. Like, what kind of shit is that? <laughs> That's that's absolutely crazy. That really, really is. You would think that's more sustainable for everybody than anything. Right. I think that's in America. I'm not sure about the UK, but they were saying like it's illegal for you to have a patch of land on your front lawn. So c turn your whole garden into a patch of land where you grow potatoes, carrots, vegetables, all that stuff. 
uh, apparently that's illegal because you need a license. What kind of BS is that? But like, if you were to go off the grid and live in, I don't know, some desert environment where you have a greenhouse that's dedicated to this stuff, then perhaps you could be rid of all of this stuff. But, you know, I think the definition of veganism that I um, like the best is reducing the, um, oh, what is it now? Uh, the act of, the way of life that reduces animal suffering as much as feasibly possible or something like that. And yeah, I think that that's definitely a, a, a something for all of us to think about in our lives. Like, do we really need to use certain products or eat certain things that we know have suffered? The one, the one that comes to mind for me, and this is like a confession now, I'm in the booth already. Um, I used to eat, you know, them Rustler's burgers. I bet it's real. Oh man, you know, I used to love that shit. And now when I look at it, I'm like, Ima that little piece of meat, imagine how much that has suffered to get there. It's, it's like low quality, so that means, and it's cheap, so that means that the environments that it was used to grow in, uh, the environments that were used to grow that meat in were really bad. And that means I'm taking on all of that shit. So every time I look at that, it's like a reminder for me to say, no, good luck. let's pick up some kale or something. <laughs> Exactly. I was a really big meat eater, I've got to admit, because I was a personal trainer and obviously been a semi-professional footballer and even we've been in the slaughterhouse and things and seeing the cruelty that was going on in there, I, sometimes it would absolutely torment me. But at the same time, I was basically being hypocritical because I was seeing that and I think I was shutting myself off because I was a meat packer. I didn't do, I would never do any of the killing and things like that. I told them that, I just couldn't do it, but seeing what actually went on in there and then I was getting out and having things like burgers and copious amounts of chicken, I used to believe that we needed all this protein to get strong because I would be doing that all the time and I was, every single meal would be tons and tons of meat and I just, I just feel terrible that I actually did all that through the years but for, it's sad that sometimes we, it takes us a long time to get that connection. 100% man, I agree. I, but I think like we wouldn't be able to appreciate where like the 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 knowledge and the the compassion we have now if we had not done that like definitely for me frozen pizza and those convenient chicken burgers that was my shit i used to love that and now i look at it i'm like <laughs> i can't even think about eating it that's that's the great thing about being vegan now there's even in the past i would say three years it's really really boomed you've get you've got vegan pizza you've got vegan pies you've got vegan chocolate Every single thing that you can get, vegan cakes, everything you can get in a US standard diet, you can get a vegan option for now. And, and most of them taste, ex everyone tastes the same. I would only say for the big part is obviously cheese. Vegan cheese can be a bit hit and miss because it, some of it does taste terrible. And I think that's why a lot of people obviously want to stay on taking cheese. But like I talked about earlier, obviously the case of morphines and things like that in it as well. But the big one... Most things like follow your heart vegan cheese and you've got Daya now and obviously Via Life in the UK, they're really, really good. They're about the three best ones actually because most of them don't melt properly but you've just got to do what you can, I would say. I've, I've had a few vegan cheeses that have turned me both ways. One I had was made out of coconut, uh, I think it was the flesh of the coconut and then they put flavouring on it. That was all right. It w wasn't terrible. Then I had another one, which is just like, no, I'm never, never, <laughs> never having that again. Definitely, yeah. You can even make your own with cashew nuts and things like that, blending them with water and things. It's uh, they turn out absolutely great, and just add in some nutritional cheese. Turns mm. out brilliant. Mm. I want to, um, I want to focus on the uh, vegan activism for a minute. Um, look, for me personally. I don't vote, I don't get involved with things that go on in politics and I don't um, take to the streets and I don't protest and stuff like that. Not, not to judge anyone who does, but that's my preferred method of doing that stuff is by spreading my own message, living the, it, as the example. So, you know, what, what are the stages of activism for, that you've got involved with? Well, I started out before doing things like outreach, which is basically going into the public and showing them Earthlings' experiences with the virtual reality headsets. That's probably the best one I would recommend for just new vegans starting out in activism because you don't need to do a lot of communication between the public and things like that because you're basically you're just showing them 
giving them the facts and letting them see the screens and most of them get that connection by just seeing the cruelty going on there. Then I started going on to doing things on my YouTube channel and then obviously doing vigils at the slaughterhouses. Basically, we bear witness to obviously the, the animals for like three minutes. We stop the trucks and basically show what the basically showing, giving them the last three minutes uh, before they go to get killed. That's, that can be really, really difficult for a lot of people because it's really, really hard looking into their eyes and seeing the suffering and knowing what the animals are going through. And a lot of people just can't do that. I would always say, basically, just do, do what feels right for you. Like I say, a lot of people can post things on their Facebook. That can be a form of activism. Even sharing your vegan meals on your YouTube channel or anything like that, that's as big a activism as anything because you're saving animals every day and you're showing people that you can get healthy in a vegan lifestyle as well. It's just what works for you. You know what the last one you said about the the YouTube channels. Whenever I look up a recipe now, um, I'm not a great cook, so I have to follow the recipes. Um, I I always look up a recipe and then I think, what's the vegan alternative? And I type it into Google. For example, like uh, we were gonna make lamb one day, but I couldn't be bothered to go to the um, what's it called to the butcher and get the 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 stuff. So I said, okay, let's look up the vegan alternative. I'm sure it will taste just as good. So we had like, um, what was it? You know, the meat, uh, mock meat, that's it. Um, we had some mock meat sausages and we like ground it up and we made like the, um, like the roast out of that. And we had like vegetables and stuff. And when we were eating it, we were like, we saved money, we saved time and we didn't have to go out of the house and we made everything. And there was someone on YouTube who was showing us every step of the way how to do it. And I think that, in, in itself, it seems very like, oh, I'm just making a video, but it's so powerful. Like people like me, I'm, I'm lazy, man. There's sometimes I don't want to leave the house for, for whatever reason. And, and to have the convenience of someone showing you step by step, this is what you do. The ingredients can be found in your garden, in the cupboard, in like the grocery store, where, wherever it is. Like all of this stuff can be so easy. And I think that is a very common misconception with people who look at veganism like, oh, why would I want to do that? It's going to be expensive. It's going to take time. It's going to be more hassle. All of that stuff. And I, I say that because I thought that in the beginning. I, and I just thought, where do you get vegan food? What the hell does that look like? Until someone said to me, you eat vegan food all the time. Fruit, vegetables, like nuts, seeds, like it's everywhere and you know now um blackberries are in season in the uk i've just been picking them off the tree and i joke about it and i say to to my brother i'm like oh yeah this is vegan and it's free and and it's really like it's so simple to uh, to see it every single day and in fact it's easier to find vegan food than it is to find non-vegan food which is crazy and it, again it shows us that the agenda is being pushed to to conf well not confuse but to misinform us to believe that we need meat that, that's very very true and that's probably the misconception that a lot of people get they think veganism is expensive but it's just like any other lifestyle it's as cheap or as expensive as you want to make it because all your staples like your potatoes your rice your seeds your legumes pasta you can even make bulk meals like if you've got a slow cooker you can do things like vegetable chilies you can do a lot of different things chickpea curries everything it can be as cheap and as expensive as you want to make it mm, yeah definitely agreed um th this has been really fun for me tommy and I i'd like to say thanks for for joining me it really, really has it's been great speaking to you yeah and um before we leave i'd just like to touch on one last thing which is like how has veganism changed your life? Like, well, what, what benefits have you seen? Well, basically, we were suffering with my eating disorder. I didn't have any motivation in life. And basically, I restricted a lot of food groups and was scared of eating certain foods. Basically, veganism has helped cure that. But all the foods now, I know that what I'm putting into my body is not only good for myself, but good for the animals and the planet. It's basically opened the doors that my eating disorder closed. Wow, that's that's a really powerful thing to, to mention. And thank you so much for being so uh, open about your journey. I mean... Thanks very much for having me on. Yeah, the, these um, eating disorders are uh, unfortunately quite common in, in, in people of all ages, not just young people. And I, I really appreciate people like yourself and Colette sharing your journeys, 
uh, being open about it and, and for like just saying what is real. And we have a tendency, unfortunately, these days to want to make things look great for social media and whatever. But I think the, the power in sharing our vulnerabilities is um, we, we can help other people with, with what they're going through. And, and yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's very, very true. Eating disorders especially f- f- thrive in secrecy and it's about speaking out, asking for help and, and it's really important to know and, and say it's okay not to be okay because I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with. They don't want to admit their problem. They think it shows a sign of weakness. It actually shows a lot of strength and just speak out to anybody you can, whether that be a family member or a friend, you can go online and speak anonymously. But most important thing is getting the help early as you possibly can. Mm, yeah, I um I think like the main thing for the people that I've spoken with during my coaching sessions, I do a lot of free coaching with young people. There, there is a lot of um, there's a lot of worry about you. Like you said, it's okay to not be okay. There, there's a lot of worry, particularly with young people. Like they're growing up with shit like Snapchat and Instagram. They think that they need to make themselves look like the celebrities that are doing whatever. And when we dive really deep into the root of this problem, it stems from, well, what's everyone else going to say or think if I come out with this? And and it's really to our detriment. But yeah, I think it's, it's really great the work that um, people like yourself are doing. So many people online sharing their journeys. That, that definitely is going to help to help other people out with, with what they're struggling with. Really, really appreciate that. I really do. Mm. So um, where, with that being said, where's the best place for anyone to get hold of you if they've got questions for you, Tommy? Yeah, they can get me on, obviously, my YouTube channel, Tofu Tommy. I'm on, I'm on Instagram as well, Tofu Tommy 120180 and the same at Twitter. And I'm also on Facebook. I've got a Facebook page, Tofu Tommy, as well. You can message me or you can email me as well at tkelly906 at googlemail.com. I'd be welcome to chat to anybody if I can help anybody in any way, eating disorders, veganism, anything at all. Mm, that's great to hear, Tommy, and thanks for sharing. Um, we'll, all, of your, uh, all of Tommy's links will be in the description and on the screen, so make sure you're checking those out. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. You know you can catch the podcast every Wednesday and Saturday, and we'll see you next time. Peace.